This is TV, Hello. otherwise known as Sebo Co, Booktuber. This is Virginie Leschulette. Am I pronouncing that so wrong? Leschulette? Chouette? Chouette? <laughs> <laughs> From chouette.com. We are here to talk about The Secret Fire, a book we both really, really love. Otherwise known as Le Feu Secret. We have had the amazing, amazing opportunity to put some questions to this book's authors, yeah. CJ Doherty and Karina Rosenfeld. <laughs> I chose this location to film my part of this particular vlog post because it is the actual park that I based a, a big section of the Secret Fire in. So this is my hometown in the south of England and this is downtown my town so you can kind of see the kind of place I live in and it's very much like Woodbury in the Secret Fire where Taylor lives. There's a park almost exactly like it in my book and this was my inspiration. I think of this as very English. I'm sorry I can't be in front of the Eiffel Tower as I wanted to be at first. I'm in a Parisian park, you can see the balloon behind me. It's a not as famous as the Eiffel Tower, but it's quite nice. You can climb on the balloon and see Paris from the sky. It's quite exciting too, and there is uh, water behind, and it's quiet at this moment of the day, so it's perfect to do my thing. This has been a great collaboration because the two authors are French and English, and we are English and French. You wouldn't have known, would you? <laughs> These are the questions we decided to ask. I really wanted to know how on earth did you go about writing a collaboration? Did you write alternate chapters? Did you write a character each? We started off writing alternate chapters. It just happened organically that Corinna sent me her first chapter. The natural thing for me to do then was to send her my first chapter, which became chapter two. I created uh, Sasha and uh, CG created Taylor. Most of the time I wrote Sasha's parts and most of the time CG wrote Taylor's parts. As the book went along, it became slightly different in that we would write scenes or sections and maybe that was two or three chapters which we would then send to one another and it, we just sort of played it by ear more than anything. We wrote it the way it wanted to be written. Sometimes she had to write Sasha's part and I just edited it, it to have more Sasha Touch in it. As the writer of uh, the Night School series and the Phoenix series, you have very distinct um, identities as writers. So uh, was it difficult to actually uh, come up with a secret fire uh, with this you know, consideration? For me, uh, each world is a new, different adventure. I can't write the same book in the same universe with the same style each time. So. I have to dive in a new universe, in a new world with new characters each time and it was just the same process with The Secret Fire. The difference was I wasn't alone to write it, but we mixed our universes very easily. Uh, CG wanted to do something more fantastic, more paranormal and this is what I do most of the time. This book has two main characters, Sasha and Taylor. Sasha is a boy, <laughs> French, dark. Handsome, hot. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's hot. Taylor is hot in you a very British, Taylor's. prim way. <laughs> Taylor's. Yeah, prim and proper. Karina and CJ, we would like to know which of you is more like Sasha and which of you is more like Taylor. I think there's no question. I really don't know. We each wrote characters we relate to most. I'm the bookish, uh, quiet one. Karina's the boyish, outgoing running around jumping off of things one so she she's much more like Sasha and I'm very much Taylor. I don't have any powers like Taylor and I not immortal like Sasha so I'm not any of them and at the same time I think they're both a little bit like us. Uh, they are human, they have the same concerns, the same fears, the same joys. So of course there's a little bit of each other in our characters and our characters look a little bit like us. But I can say who is more like Sasha or Taylor, I, I really don't know. So CJ and Karina, were you able to visit each other's settings? CJ, did you go to Paris? Karina, were you able to visit Oxford? Beautiful, beautiful Oxford. Well, I've been to Oxford uh, like four years ago, but it was not for the book, it was just as a tourist. Uh, 
uh, I was in England uh, with friends and we were uh, visiting all the places where Harry Potter was shot. Both of us had already been to these locations before we started writing. Um, the section in Paris where Sasha and Taylor get together is loosely based on an actual event that happened to Corinna, so we built that into it. But the section in the Tuileries and around the Louvre is one of my favorite parts of Paris. And those walks, sort of, that they go on that day, those multiple kilometer walks, I've definitely done that as a tourist. And the view of the Eiffel Tower in the really critical scene um, in the book, which you haven't read, you don't know yet, but it's a critical scene. That view, I went there with Kira Kass and Karuna, and we stood in that exact park and watched the lights come on and off, and that was very inspirational in the writing. One of the settings, I suppose, in The Secret Fire is set in uh, Carcassonne, uh, which is somewhere in France. Um, so my question is that as Carcassonne is actually um, a lot less known uh, than Salem when it comes to uh, Wicca uh, mythology, um, how do you feel that Carcassonne and its history is actually rivaling with Salem and if so, in what way? Salem is a very young city compared to Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a historical city in France. Uh, and it's so much older than Salem and the history of inquisitions and burnt witches and trials there uh, who took place in the city are very old, a lot older than Salem. Maybe Salem is more famous because it's in the US and they made movies out of it and they wrote books but Carcassonne in France is well known for that. It's a very, very beautiful historical city. And when you dig a little bit, you can learn all what happened in here. There's no question that Carcassonne gives Salem more than a run for its money. I didn't really know until I started researching this book, the absolute bloodbath that was Carcassonne for hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, the, the list of the dead is epic. In Salem, I think, fewer than 30 alleged witches were killed, maybe even fewer than 20, it wasn't that many. In Carcassonne it was thousands, thousands. It's not the same, it's older in, wait, by centuries, by centuries, I'm not talking a few years, I'm talking centuries of history, of mysteries, of things that happened there. So, we can completely revolve Salem, yes, and it's prettier. I went to Salem and I went to Carcassonne and Carcassonne is, it looks like an old castle. You really have to go there. The Vatican allegedly believed at the time that the membrane between hell and, and our sort of dimension was thinner there. So they really focused their energy there looking for witches and people who believed in whatever that they didn't believe in. It was quite a dark, dark place. If you, like Sasha, couldn't die, what dangerous, risky situations might you take part in? If I couldn't die, I'd do everything, I suppose. I'm terrified of heights, mortally afraid of them. So the things Sasha does in the book, I can't even bear to think about it. So maybe I wouldn't be. And maybe I wouldn't be afraid to fly. I mean, I fly, but I hate it. So maybe I'd love flying. Or, like, I once got caught in a riptide while out body surfing. And so since then I'm kind of scared of the ocean because I nearly died. So maybe I wouldn't care. Maybe I'd just like rip tide all over the place without a care in the world. I think I'd be just, I'm brave because I'm afraid. I think that's what bravery is, to do the thing you're scared of. What would you be like if you weren't scared of anything? What is that? That's not bravery, I suppose that's recklessness. So I guess I'd just be reckless. Maybe I use my powers to help people with them being afraid of dying or being hurt. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not, as we say in French, casse-cou, someone who takes a lot of risk. <laughs> so I don't know, really, I don't know. I would do jump from uh, buildings or from the balloon here or see. So no, <laughs> um, I'm fine on the ground. So yes, maybe I will use my powers to help people. Maybe uh, take them out of fire or 
I don't know, something like that. So both Taylor and Sasha in this have really strong mother figures, but fathers who aren't really present for one reason or another. As female writers, was this a kind of feminist choice? And do you think it really shaped the characters as people? As a female writer, I defend all feminist ideas, and I think it's important to to be there a strong woman figure. But I don't think we especially need to be feminist to describe this kind of situation. A lot of mothers are single mothers. I'm a single mom. Uh, I raised my son almost for 15 years alone, so I know what it is. And it's part of the reality of the everyday life of many women. So it's just a way to describe life like another. I was raised by a single mother. Um, and I know Karina is a single mother. So I suppose that plays into it a certain extent. These are family dynamics we both understand very well. I don't think of it as feminist so much as realistic. These sorts of families exist and I like to portray realistic families more than anything in my books, families I recognize. So this was, this felt very familiar to me. Okay, as an Oxford girl, I had to ask, why did you decide to set Aldrich there? Did you see the spires and think magic would definitely take place beneath them. Also, St. Wilfrid's College. Oxford was one of the first cities I ever visited as a tourist before I moved to England a long time ago. And I remember finding it quite magical, like just walking around it. It doesn't look like a real city, it looks like a stage set to me. It's too fantastic. So I always knew I wanted to set something there. And I always knew I wanted to set something unusual there, something dark and magical. So this just was the perfect setting for them. The idea of a alchemist college. I mean, the colleges at Oxford, you see signs on the doors. They say, you know, established 1395. <laughs> I mean, that's just like perfectly normal. So the idea that, of course, alchemists studied there. Of course, they worked there. That was science in its time. So there were alchemical colleges. There's nothing to me unbelievable about it. It was the perfect setting. And also the idea of a dark and magical place um, where alchemists gather to learn their craft. Craft. had to be there. All right, my question is actually about the Paris setting. Um, we tend to see a lot of the sites, uh, such as the Eiffel Tower, La Tour Eiffel, L'Ile de la Cité, uh, which is another one, and uh, Les Tuileries. Um, so I was just wondering whether, um, especially Corina, I suppose, was writing, uh, writing the French side, whether you actually went there, sat there and drew, and drew uh, um, inspiration uh, from those places to be able to write. We're in Paris right now, and I live in Paris. And of course, I've been to all those places many, many times. Uh, so it's a lot easier to describe places you know well. And I think I did my job on the book in the book by describing uh, or helping uh, CG describe all these places. And of course, Paris is a good source of inspiration. How could it, it be? It's just an amazing city. I lived there almost all my life and I still find it gorgeous. It's so beautiful and historical and yes, you can draw a lot of inspiration from it. In a lot of the literature um, where Paris is going to be introduced at, as the um, Ville de la, de la Lumière, I suppose, or the City of Lights again, um, we usually see the nice side. Um, this time round in Secret Fire, we were introduced to the poorer and darker side of Paris. So I was wondering why it was in, important um, for you, Karina, to actually show us that side of the town. Well, it's not exactly the Dr. Poirier side of Paris, it's more in the suburb of Paris, so it's not exactly Paris, but yes, that's the reality of life. Each huge city has its darker and poorer side, uh, unfortunately, and it's the same in all the world. So maybe as a French writer, I was able to see this darker side of the city because I went there. I know it exists. Um, I don't know, maybe um, American or English writer, when they come to Paris, they only see the touristic side of it. And that's why they want to describe, because that's what inspires them. But I live here and I'm able to see 
all the sides of the city. And the final question we always have to end things on are, what are you reading right now? Oh yeah. Right now I'm reading Am I Normal Yet? by Holly Bourne, which I'm loving. It's just intense and fascinating and important and moving and I'm just, ugh, I love it. Um, I'm also re reading House of Windows by Alexia Casale. Um, well, let's, like, let's say I'm not reading it. It's next on my list and I keep looking at the cover going, I can't wait to read that too, um, which is meant to be incredible. Alexia is a brilliant writer, so I can't wait to dive into it. I just finished the fifth book of the Night School series, of course. It was translated in French and I I read this one in, in French and I loved it. And right now I'm reading uh, the Lunar Chronicles. Uh, I'm reading Scarlet. Uh, and I can't wait to receive the last book of the series, uh, The Peculiar Children. Uh, written by Russell Rings. I really love this series. I, so I already uh, pre-ordered my copy of the last one and I'm waiting for it. What are you oh, reading right now? What am now I that reading you finished? right now? <laughs> oh, um, what I'm reading right now, I'm actually reading, okay, I don't know whether I can say, um, <laughs> True Fire by Gary Meehan. I'm also doing a read along about it. Do you only read books with fire in the title? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, and I am obviously reading the last few pages because I'm a bad, bad person. <laughs> no, you're not a bad person. You just wanted to savor it. You know, like a real French person in food, like a good wine. There you go. Thank you for joining us. We hope you, like us, really enjoy the Secret Fire. I really hope you'll pick it up. By the way, I do think that um, it's a read that you will definitely enjoy and probably just like us mm -hmm. we'll have more questions than answers in the end but that's what makes it interesting you'll race through it and get to a point where you just really can't believe you haven't got book two already yet yes okay bye there guys bye throughout my reading life i have had numerous comments made against my intelligence for even the idea that i might read something that isn't capital l literature and what are these works that are